The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down to 309. NASDAQ is off 119. S&Ps are off 40. That's a downdraft of 1.5% uh, in the NASDAQ, 1.1% in the Dow, as well as the S&Ps. Gold contract. Gold contract up $7.50, trading at 1511 an ounce. You have silver up 26 cents, $17.80 an ounce, and it's pretty cool with silver. Uh, the number you want to keep your eye on is $17.82. That gets silver in the higher range, and uh, you get there you're going to see some uh, big action. Notes and bonds. You get the 10-year uh, up 11 ticks, trading 131.28. The 30-year is up uh, 23. That baby is trading at 165.03. And what we had with both the 10 as well as the 30 folks as well as the TLT is that they all rejected lower price out here this morning. They have, uh, well, we'll see if they're going to have lighter volume. Bottom line is that they look like they got ABC structures up that will take them actually over your September highs. And right now we have the 10-year yield in 1.50, 1.52. Yep, dollar, dollar index up 49 ticks, 99.016. Dollar still hanging tough. You get the pound getting uh, basically going lower today. We'll see whether it breaks those lows out. The euro is at 109. The pound's at 122, and the yen is at 106.92. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world. In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look. And if you take a look at this spy, what you're going to see out here, all the indices, folks, have a potential ABC structure on the way down set up. Uh, we had out here yet, well, here, if we just take it from the, the highs. We take it going back to the September 19th. 19th, we're at 302 on the spy. You get all the way down to the third, 284. You get a great bounce on Friday. Bottom line, Tremendously light of volume. We bounce. We get, the SPY goes from 290 to 294.63. You do 66 million shares. Well, 66 million was going against 142. What do we do yesterday? It's classic, man. You get above the high. You close under the high. More than likely, that's your C point. The real question is, is that are you going to get enough volume as you have to go after the B point of this potential ABC structure on the way down, which is 284.82? What has happened out here this morning is that you are into the bar now. And we'll see how far, so the, the high of the low, which was established on the 3rd of last week, is 290.45. Right now, we just dug uh, into it by a buck 20. The further that we dig into it, the higher the probability that you're going to go to the bottom of it, and we'll see whether you get the volume. You get the volume, you blow that out, guess what? Next stop is down there at 281. NDX 100, same setup inside the NDX. We have with the NDX 100. Exact same type of setup. Uh, we're down $2.50. The high of that low is 186.20. We're into that, not as much. We're only 185.72. Bottom line, we'll see where, how this shakes out. That sets up the 179 area. Small caps, folks, are a whole different number. Now, what's happening with the small caps is this, and this is going to be pretty intense because the small caps have, they topped out a year ago, April. And when you bring this up, what you're going to see is that there been a consolidation since then, okay? The, the high of the small caps was the, actually was uh, August of uh, 2018, 173. We've been in this consolidation after coming off the lows of December of 2018 since basically February of 2018. Now, what you have is this. We came down last week with monster volume. Last week, we had 122 million shares. You were going into 101. That is building cause to blow this away. You blow this away, and if you take the top of the consolidation, is 163. You take the bottom, which is 144. We got, what, 18 points. You got uh, 134, 124, 127. And 125 is the low of December. Small caps, we're going to get a lot of information off the small caps, because as soon as they break, if they break, okay, you have to get a, a monster heads up, folks, because what's going on, the S&P is so far away from the December lows. We take a look at this S&P, 
And this is a heads up, like beyond belief. The cash S&P is at 2906. The December lows at 2346. Bottom line, you know, that's, that's where we're at. So it's going to be wild watching this whole thing shake out. If we look at the end, oh, you want to see something, you want to see a failure, NVDA. This is a classic time in the trade failure. So NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA yesterday was going for a tie, right? You did 12.2 million shares. Well, you're coming into the 12.4 million, and then the downdraft out there was 21 million. It got up into that area, closed at its low. Now what you have, you're down $7.5, but that's just not the kicker. The kicker is you're going to have monster volume out here today. We've already done 2.8 million. That's going to generate about 15, 16 million. And when those chips start going south, folks, get out of the way. Inside the NDX 100, the strength versus the weakness inside the NDX, you get American Airlines up 1%. Monster Beverage is up two-thirds of 1%. Taken away from it. Illumina is down 4.5%. NVIDIA is down 4. You got Clack down 4. Qualcomm is off 3.8. Inside the Dow Industrials, the strength versus the weakness inside the Dow Industrials, what we have out here, it's all red. There's not one equity that is not red inside the Dow. And you do what you do have is you have the leader, uh, which is going to be really dangerous for the Dow, Boeing. Boeing is uh, putting 48 negative points, Goldman 26, Visa 18, IBM 17. Uh, the least amount down is uh, Walgreens Boots. Uh, that's only putting a half a point in. Exxon Mobil's only putting a half a point in. Uh, Walmart's only putting 1.2. Uh, so your, your biggest, your biggest uh, deals there happen to be, you know, the large, the large uh, cap. Uh, and, of course, inside the Dow Industrials, that is a huge problem because it's that, the way that that's a skewed weighting uh, inside of that index. The, uh, some of the higher volume equities out here, let's go take a look at, and it looks to me uh, already a few of these, it looks like we're going to get some volume on the way down today. You get J.P. Morgan down 229. That's going to be all about rates, folks. Visa's down 277. You get Caterpillar off 177. Boeing is down 714. Uh, IBM is off 246. Let's go look at IBM. IBM hasn't been able to get traction. I think it topped out like seven years ago at 210. Um, so IBM down 250. We're at 138. I got to bring this. Hard to comprehend. Bring it back seven years, but I think that's what it was. Yeah, six years. 215. 215. You're at 138. And, you know, this is a classic. You, know, you can only bounce up to ice. This is, IBM's got big problems, man. Yep. And what's sticking out like a sore thumb with IBM, what had happened is that when we got down to the price point of 116, what saved IBM, and it can again, uh, is the downdraft of October of 2008. It's pretty amazing when you, when you look at this, but you'll see. That volume there was huge. It was 315 million. When we got down there in February of 2016, you had 106 million. That was going into 315. That's not enough. When we got down there in December of 8, 2018, it was 115. So watch this: 115 versus 106 versus the 315. So if you happen to think IBM may go higher, just wait till it gets down there. Because if you do get another rejection of lower price. And the volume contracts again, that's, that's, you know, you get a consolidation. You, you can get some de decent juice out of that because the low of that is 105. That consolidation, the high of that consolidation is about 150. You know, so pretty intense. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Dow, Dow's down 281. Nasdaq's up 104. S&P's up 36. We'll come right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down 274. Nasdaq's off 100. S&Ps are off 35. And uh, right now, we're down about 1.25% uh, across all the indices. Europe is down just about the same amount. So this is where the battle line is going to be set up here, folks, for the next couple hours. Because what you're going to have, of course, is that Europe is coming into its close, going to an hour and a half in, into the close. Where that goes is going to be uh, basically where we go. You know, if they start selling Europe off, you'll see an expansion uh, of downward price, even in our market. But right now, the battle lines are set up. Let's go to our man, Jim, in Palm Harbor. What's happening, brother? Hey, Tom. How are you this morning? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? I'm doing good. Good. Good, uh, to, hear. good to hear from you. We get a couple degrees cooler, don't we? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, this is about the best time of year, usually. Uh, it gets a little lower humidity and everything. I know. I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Uh, I was calling today. I, I was just watching uh, Fox A, F O X A, it's an Apple. And uh, I was curious uh, when a stock has been going down as much as it has, and then it's nearing a 52 week low, yeah. how do you need to look at that? Because um, you might think that it's about the bottom and, and it would probably go back up from a 52 week low, but I just want to hear how you would analyze that. So. This is Fox A. Now, what happens here also, folks, you got to remember, Fox sold to Disney. So this was a spinoff, okay? Uh, and this spinoff here, th this spinoff here, they kept the, I believe, the TV and the cable. That's what they did, okay? So this is the company, right? Yeah, it's television and cable, okay? They get $6 billion in TV, $5.4 in cable. So I, I absolutely would not buy this right now, Jim, and this is why. So, so picture this. When we bring this back, folks, what you're going to see is that it's only really been trading. We bring this all the way back here. It's been a one-way trade on the way down. Um, so you've been trading since uh, $41.87. That brings it back of March of 19. That being said, it was a one-way trip down. Now watch this. Fundamentally, folks, what happens is this. Fundamentally, when they spun that off, what that was saying is that they spun it off at way too high a price. So they scored beyond belief, okay? Meaning for the shareholders, okay? Who sold it, not the pe people that basically got it. Now, what happens, Jim, is that, and I can see, you know, what you're talking about, you know, uh, on last Wednesday, 
uh, we got to a price point of $29.70. Well, the way I would trade this is that first you'd want a rejection of lower price, okay? Then you want to see a sign of strength. So what a sign of strength is is this. First you get the rejection, then you're going to get a nice pop. I mean, you're going to have wide price spread, you're going to get big volume come in it. And like, let's say if we got a sign of strength in the next couple of days, you'd, you'd want this stock, we're at $30.14, you want the stock to almost go like up 10%, 33 or something, okay, with monster volume. Then you wait, 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 and as it comes back to retest that area, that's when you buy it. Because then what it's shown is this. Like, thus far, all it shows is that people keep selling it. And there hasn't been no buyers because we, we see there's no sign of strength. Every time it's going, well, it's going to be going down and the volume keeps accelerating. So that's kind of how I like the setup because then at least you have a shot that you know you get a buyer in it. Now, what gets interesting here, folks, is this. There's two different things. That's technically. Fundamentally, what you're going to see, and the closer that we get to the 2020 elections, and the more that these stations are going to make. I mean, this is going to be a very expensive election. And the way that it works, like when we had the radio station up in Nashville, New Hampshire, the way this works is phenomenal. What happens is that the way that political ads run is that the, let's say that Fox has uh, deals with, you know, other advertisers, right? The political, the way it works is that you give one price, and that's the daily price. And what happens is that the political operators have to pay the, the stations before the ad runs. So they, they take in, I mean, Fox is going to take in billions, all of them, CBS, NBC. I mean, they're, they're going to take in a lot. So I wouldn't buy it right now, Jim, but I'd keep watching it because the amount of money that comes in, like the, when we own the station up there, we made more money in six weeks than we made in a whole year. That's how, that's how insane it is. And, and that was, uh, well, New Hampshire is always big because it's the first primary. You get senators running and all that. Do you know what I'm saying? But, and I'm talking about we had, a, we had a tiny station. It was a raindrop. Do you know what I mean? These stations here, yeah. they, will, they, will, they will print money. You know, so it just, you'd, you'd like to see that sign of strength first. Though. That's what I'd go for. Because you don't know where the low is. You know, you just, it just, you just don't know, man. You know? Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, you got time to look at one more for sure. me? Sure, yeah. Okay, how about K-L-A-C? Clack, okay. So let's take a look at it. Uh, you got Clack? Uh, the low for the year is no. $80. The mm -hmm. high is uh, $162. Uh, you're at 154 And this, okay, so let's, this is a real, this is one of the strongest chip stocks there are, too, which is pretty cool. You get this. Yeah, they make a lot of the machines and uh, things, too, for yes. uh, chip manufacturing. Yep. So you get an expansion going from May of this year, 101 to 155. I'd let this, I mean, it looks to me like you can get into the 148, and I could look at it again. Do you know what I mean? You bet. You, what you're doing right now is this. You know, that was a one-way move. Like, 101, you know, you can see this. I mean, 101 to 162, sweet move, right? Um, but I would let this back down first, you know, and where I'm going first, I mean, if the volume's too high at 148, then don't do it, but you get 148 and you get 143 that, you know, you get some support there. You get a lot of buyers there. That's the bottom line, you know, so most times if you're getting down into that level, if it's going to be a buy, you're going to see a big contraction of price. And what I would do simultaneously though, now this has been the strongest chip stock out there, okay? Um, let me see. RV. Let me see who else is really strong. Because, and that, okay, so 3.7%. Tokyo. Teradyne. Teradyne's close. Let me see Teradyne. So T-E-R. T-E-R. These guys are in the testing business. Same testing. I mean, not the same business, but the reason I'm bringing this up, this is going to be another strong chip stock. So what I do, Jim, is that get a couple of these other chip stocks that are also at their highs right now, like Teradyne is one of them, and see how that's operating also. Because, you know, 
You're at 57.98. This looks like, I mean, if it goes back to its breakout area, it would be pretty intense. It's 46. Uh, but that's what I'd be looking for, meaning looking at other couple of chip stocks before you dive. Because if we're in an ABC down market right now, uh, they'll take everything with it. You know what I mean? And it, the, with, uh -huh. Because chips are basically a commodity business, they take them pretty south uh, pretty quick. And if you look at the strongest ones, you know, you, you get a better inclination that particularly so. Look at the, the two that we just brought up. What's happening, even though Clack's down six bucks, this thing is really still strong compared to where we are in the marketplace. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. you got to line up the market somewhat with those chips coming down into those big volume bars. Okay. Cooking, Appreciate brother. It. Okay. Great Bye. hearing from you, man. Okay. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Dow's down 274. Nasdaq's up 97. S&P's are off 35. We'll come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Go get them, folks. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's off 293, NASDAQ 103, S&P's 37. Let's go over to J.P. Morgan. So what you have here with the financials, folks, financials also have a potential ABC structure on the way down. What has happened in the financials right now, you already have an expansion of volume. Yesterday, uh, you got, went hit a high with 6.8 million. You can see J.P. Morgan, you already done 2.4. So J.P. is going to do about 12 million out here today. Um, the beginning of the, the high of the B point is... 112.91. Well, we're already into it. 
That's saying the probability is much higher. We're going to go to the bottom of it. Now, check this out. It looks like we're going to do about 12 million. I don't think we're going to go off to the B point today, but we'll go. The B point only is 13.10 million. So the bottom line is that your probability that you can break that is going to be probably pretty high as we get into about 2, 2.30 this afternoon. I would, as again, I don't say we're going to break it today. What we will get there, though, if the volume continues like it is right now and price uh, has already dug into that bar. We go take a look at Bank of America, BAC. You get the, <coughs> excuse me, folks, same setup there. The low in Bank of America, the B point is 27.16. Now, this is getting really close, and this will definitely have the volume. And if it's, so if Bank of America breaks this today, which is 27.16, which would only be 30 cents lower than the low of today, there you're going to have an ABC structure down. And your A point on this is $30.32. Your B point is uh, 27, so you get uh, about three bucks, which is going to get you to 25.62, and that will go break the lows of this consolidation. Let's go look at this because this would be pretty intense. The ABC would break the consolidation. Yeah, this is heavy, man. Okay. Yeah. It, this is set up to break the consolidation, and the consolidation, this consolidation started in January of 2019, and that's saying that, guess what, the December uh, levels a game once again. Let's go to the XLF because that's pretty intense. Uh, it makes sense though because what we have had is that. So picture the note and bond market, folks. Right, uh, the, the S and P, the Dow, the Nasdaq. We've been in a trading range for a year and a half, right? The bonds have not. The, the bonds, okay, have gone one way. They're going higher price, lower yield on a consistent basis. What does happen is that as we've popped up a little, bottom line, you have the bonds pull back, but every pullback is so slight, it's insane. The XLF is set up the exact same way, meaning that, you know, we hit a high yesterday of 36 million. Well, you've already done 13. 13 is going into 81, so you get five. That's, uh, yeah, that's over 81,000, uh, 81 million. We're just approaching the highs of the low inside the XLF. You know, we're at 26.81. The high is 26.96. Bottom line, we bring this back, and if this breaks down, it's the same type of setup, meaning that what's going to be game next is the December 2018 level, uh, which uh, <laughs> is going to be pretty intense because what does happen in a market like this is that the surprises, folks, will come from the downside, meaning that, yeah, we're down, you know, one and a quarter percent right now. That's not, that's not that bad. Uh, guess what? This battle line, you know, as I said a little bit earlier, we're, we're about where the European market is right now. Uh, but what we will see, uh, particularly the European market got an hour left in it. What we'll see is that where that, you know, if you start selling off in that European market, you'll start seeing us coming down hard and fast. And what does happen is that the, this early in the day, meaning 10.30, you had the first leg down. If this second leg down starts, you know, let's say in another 45 minutes, it's going to be a huge problem because what you'll get there is that this the second leg would bring you to a whole different animal. Meaning, you know, we're only down 1.2 percent. You get you start going down 1.9 percent. You start going down uh, 2 percent. Different different animal whatsoever. Different 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 animal. You're going to be hitting different triggers. You know. Because what you do have, you got to remember something that was, you know, most of us at TFNN, you're dealing with Fibonacci sequence, you're dealing with, you know, different patterns that are setting up, and you're dealing with, uh, bottom line is that trends. You know, the S&P has already basically, well, it has. It's broken its 50, it's broken its 100. You know, what saved it uh, last time, yeah, let's pull it up. So you're going to see what definitely did happen last Wednesday uh, is that you had uh, funds coming in, buying at the 200. They like buying at the 200. There's no two ways about that. Bottom line, you know, and they saved it. That being said, uh, you go to the small caps, and you're going to see there's no save in the small caps, man. I mean, this is probably about as intense as you get. The small caps have been under everything since the downdraft of October 1st. And we bring this back further, you're going to see there's some, there's some heavy destruction in here. And the last time that we did go under everything is all the way back in October of 2018. And, of course, then, then the thing just fell apart. So that's where the small caps are right now. 
We go take a look at the NDX 100, because you got to remember, when I just talked with our man Jim from Palm, Palm Harbor, what does happen is that the, the chips basically can lead the NDX 100 as well as the NASDAQ Composite up, and they can lead them down, because it's just people buy and sell those equities very, very quick. Okay, that, that's how this shakes out. So if I bring up the Qs, you're going to see that the Qs already blew away their 50, blew away their 200. And, you know, that didn't make it to the 200-day to the move, no, blew away the 50 and 100. Didn't make it to the 200. Okay, the 200 uh, moving average there was uh, 180, and it made it to uh, 180, 182. Um, we're, we're in a very dangerous place right here, particularly because we've been in this consolidation so long, folks. I Meaning we've been in a consolidation at the highs, you pull back a little, you have the folks come in, they buy buy the dip, right? You go up again. Yesterday was a big number. Uh, you know, yesterday the market was in harmony. You got over the highs of Friday, closed underneath them. Now what is happening out here today is that you do have an expansion of volume. When you get an expansion of volume, you're going after a B point. It's early in the morning. You can get a lot more downside. Amazon, let's go look at the FANG stocks out here. Uh, Amazon's down 16 bucks. No big deal there. But what am Amazon is sticking out, like a sore thumb, is 16.72. Hasn't been tested. We got down to 16.85 last week. I expect that 16.82 is going to get tested. Google, we're going to take a look at Google out here. Google right now, down $16. That's nothing for Google. You know, uh, bottom line, Google looks like it wants to test the. Uh, 11.75, and you're at 11.91. Uh, Netflix, uh, I don't think they're going to be calling that a fang after a certain amount of time because uh, Netflix, no doubt, is uh, basically technically in trouble. Fundamentally, they're probably in trouble too. Um, you know, you're down from a high of a 4.23 or 2.73. Uh, this thing is banging into the, the strength from uh, 2018. Now, Netflix happened to be one of the first equities. We got down three weeks ago to 252. Well, the high of the low of December of 2018 is 261. So it got into it. Now watch this. This is really cool, man. It got into it and it had volume, which is 56 million shares versus that low of 47. Now what does that say? That says that we're going to be right back down there and Netflix maybe one of the first high flyers that got down to the December 2018 swing area. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down 274. Nasdaq's up 96. S&Ps are off 35. Let's get over to the dollar index because this just refuses to give it up, folks. Pretty amazing, actually. Um, so you, you get the index right now. We're up 155 ticks. You're at 99.124. And that gets it over uh, the highs of uh, August 1st once again. It's like, okay, your game once again to try to get to this high that was established last week. The high last week was 99.667. So this just refuses to give it up. Now, I'll show you what is moving this out here today. And this is going to be about Brexit. You get the pound ready to fall apart. The pound's down. So the lows of last week in the pound was 122.07. We got to 121.95 today. And, you know, you close under 122.07. We're above it right now by five ticks. And that can set up another test of the low, which is uh, that 121. And if we go to the euro, you're going to see the euro is hanging tough. But that pound, well, the euro is down 14 ticks, too. Yeah, it's down slightly. So that's, that's also putting some juice into the dollar, going to higher price. The yen's a different story. The yen's getting stronger. Uh, the yen's down 30 ticks, 106. The yen looks like it wants to run uh, down, this, uh, down to this uh, uh, 104 level. If we go over to Europe, we take a look at the FTSE, what you're going to see out here, because we are coming into... Um, Brexit at the end of October, and I suspect the way that this is set up at this particular point, he's not going to get, Johnson's not going to get a hard Brexit. He's not going to be able to pull it off. Um, that's going to be another extension, and, you know, the market in the UK, let's pull this, okay, so we got, put that, what you're going to see is that this has been, they had a tough week last week, they're trading 71.72, and that's a tough one. Yeah, that can go to the bottom of the consolidation. I guess the bottom of the consolidation is 70.20. Uh, the biggest thing that I would take out of the, the whole Brexit deal, though, folks, is that uh, we keep hearing that, yeah, it's going to be a hard Brexit. Bottom line is that I don't think, I think it's hands are tied. So more than likely we'll end up seeing is that we have an extension, then the U.K. will have another vote meaning on prime minister, not on Brexit, and then we'll see where that goes. Uh, bottom line is that I think we're going to be going, the more that I keep looking at this, I think we're going to be going through this for years right now. And we'll, we'll see where it shakes out, but that's what it seems like. XAUHUI, what do you have inside the gold market? Uh, we had out here is that you had gold reject lower price last week. Bottom line, you get the uh, XAU right now up uh, 90, uh, trading eight, up 88, trading $91.17, and let's put this up because I want to see what we had yesterday. Okay, so you had light volume yesterday. We're going to need some more volume in, inside this uh, XAU as it goes to higher price. We're coming into 40 million, and yesterday you did 25. So we're in the higher range, but the bottom line is that you're going to want more volume in the XAU. If we take a look at the Gold Bugs Index, let's see, we're up $3.21. Gold is at... Well, HUI is at 212. 
We did 17 million. Yeah, you're going to need more volume in both of them. We did 17 million going into 27. So we're definitely going to need more volume in both of them. Silver. Now, this is going to be the wild card out here, folks, because what we have got out here today is that you caught a bid in silver. And, you know, silver has been the weak link inside the marketplace, inside the metals market. Uh, that being said, the last run in silver was pretty incredible, meaning that, you know, we take a look at silver going back to July. July was at, was at $15.10 and went all the way up to $19.75. And you get volume up there. Now, we out have out here this morning is that you, 1784, sweet, 1786. Yeah, you get action, man. This silver market um, wants to run right back to these highs. This is pretty cool, man. This is, you get an expansion of volume. You've already taken out the little swing point. You're going to have the volume there. 1784, we had 69,000 contracts. We're already at 57. Uh, let me pull this. Let's see how far more you have to actually go to break. Okay, this is cool. So to break the downtrend that, that we've had in silver, as well as the metals since September 4th, okay, you have, we would have to get over... $18.15. 18, I like how this is trading into it because what you're doing, you're coming into the, the trend line that's down at this particular point, and you got an expansion of volume. Let's go take a look at the platinum market for one of our tigers out here. So platinum, I'll go, let's see. Probably should do PLZ9. Nope. PL. Oh, January contract. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're at 892.50. This got hit hard, man. Holy cow. This is platinum is almost trading like silver now. This is a trip. Okay. So it came down from 940 to 880 about a week and a half ago. This is going to have to build cars. Now, what this has done is this. When, when this came down, came back to its breakout area from the 28th of August. I have to change contracts to uh, get this. Oh, good. Well, yeah, let me go to the PPLT. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm just changing gears, folks. I'm going to go to the PPLT. And the reason being is that the PPLT is going to give me valve volume right next to the price. Because what we want to see is that we want to see that coming in with lighter volume. Okay, so we'll check it out. It's not. So... Platinum had, had gone all the way up to the price point of $93.43 at PPLT. Your breakout area had 288,000 contracts, I mean shares. You came down with 416. Now, the gap would have been 8206. We made it 8250. Then we tested it with 8240. Okay, cool. So, this is what you have here. You came, first off, you came down with too much volume. But then what we did is that we tested that with lighter volume. Now what you're going to have to see is you're going to build some cars. Most times, folks, when you come down this hard, you're not going to just go right back upside, and you're not going to get a sign of strength immediately. What you will do is you'll start building cars. And building cars is a sideways move. It's very subtle. It's cause to the upside. So what you're going to want to be looking at is that how does it push higher versus how does it push lower. And every time what you want to see is you want to see a little more volume on the way up and less volume as it's contracting going against its high volume low that was established out here on the 30th. The cool thing is that when you do have something like this and you are going into a breakout area, that area more than likely took out most people that were in the equity because the, the prior day you were already at, you were at uh, 86 and then you basically got down to 82.50 very quick. You know? And that's, that's the metals market in general. Uh, but it looks like uh, bottom line, platinum has uh, more work to do. Uh, the silver market, uh, that's the one I would say that right here today we want to really keep our eye on because the silver is right at the cusp of getting into that $17.82 uh, to $0.84. You get into that with some juice, we get action. The thing that's still amazing to me in the metals market in general is that we're at these highs and the dollar is at highs and absolutely will not give it up. So, you know, dollar gives it up, man, forget it. You're going to go to the moon like pretty quick. Dow, Dow is down 300, Nasdaq's off 104, S&P's off 37, we'll come right back.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, to go over another, uh, this, I'm going to go over gold equity with you. This is the same type of setup, folks. Now, this is a great gold equity. Don't buy it, okay? We had owned this. We had done really well with this. But I want to show you, as we were just talking about uh, platinum, this, you know, so an Eco Eagle, you know, in May, it was uh, trading at $40, okay? It goes all the way up to $64 in August. So, you know, 90% up, right? Now, let me show you something here, though. It, as it come off the highs, right? You came back to the breakout area and you came back with too much volume. Now, what happens is that same type of setup, we came back with 2.4 million. Well, you were going into 2.7, but then the actual break area was 2.1. This is also building cause now. You know, this will be ready to buy again, but what I'm trying to show here is that when you do have an equity, regardless of how strong it had been, and this is one of this was one of the strongest equities out there. It's a heads up. So what I'd like to see with this one is that you want to see this test, again, either the high or the low, which is 53.96. You know, we got down to 53. It did it with lighter volume. But now what this hasn't shown yet is another sign of strength. And that's what it's going to need. So you had the test. It rejected it. Now you need a sign of strength. Then you'd buy the next pullback. That's how, you, that's how these are shaking out. Now, that's on the daily. When you do take this and you put this on the weekly, you, I mean, actually put it on the monthly. What you're going to see in the monthly, this was a decisive break 
of the six-year deal, and you do have volume at the high. So this equity here, on a longer-term basis, is telling me it wants to go to 88 bucks. This was one of the first ones that broke, and you can see the decisive break. It's a, it's a sweet break. You broke top side, and you had volume behind the move. So stay right there, folks. We got up. TD Ameritrade coming up next. Fast markets. Then we get on, man. Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Have a great one, folks. Have a safe one.